This will be the second video of the Monetary Policy um, mini-series, which is part of Unit 2.5 of the IB Economics um, syllabus in Macroeconomics. In this video, I'm going to talk about the role of monetary policy, especially in short-term demand management. So let's get started. Now, changes in interest rates, so from now on, if I write IRS, um, IRs, I'm, I'm talking about interest rates, not the IRS in the United States. So changes in interest rates affect the level of aggregate demand. How? If you remember, aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M, right? If interest rates rise, borrowing becomes, borrowing becomes more expensive and saving becomes more appealing. So, consumers will borrow less, therefore C decreases. Businesses will borrow less, therefore I decreases. And the government will borrow less, therefore G decreases. So, you have a decrease in C plus I plus G, all components of aggregate demand. Also, when interest rates rise, the exchange rate often rises because more foreign investors come and invest in the country. So suddenly there's an increased demand for the country's currency, and so the exchange rate rises. When the exchange rate rises, exports become more expensive. So X decreases. Imports become cheaper because now it's cheaper for domestic citizens to buy goods and services from overseas, and so M rises. So you have C decreases, I decreases, C, sorry, G decreases, X decreases, and M increases. All of this leads to a fall in aggregate demand. So when interest rates rise, aggregate demand falls. And you have seen how each of the components of aggregate demand is affected. What about when interest rates fall? So let's have a look. B basically, you just flip the um, direction of the arrows. If interest rates fall, borrowing becomes less expensive. So now borrowing is cheaper and saving becomes less appealing. So now people don't want to save as much, which means consumers will borrow more, therefore C rises. Businesses will borrow more, therefore I rises. Government will borrow more, therefore G rises. Also, the exchange rate falls because now foreign investors don't really want to invest and save in that country. So exports become less expensive, so X increases. Imports become more expensive, so M decreases. And the net effect is that aggregate demand rises. So remember, interest rates and aggregate demand move in opposite directions. When interest rates rise, aggregate demand falls. When interest rates fall, aggregate demand rises. So we've seen how changes in the interest rate affect aggregate demand. Um, now let's see what happens when the central bank adopts an easy or an expansionary. These are two different words to describe the same thing. Easy monetary policy or expansionary monetary policy. An easy or expansionary monetary policy is where the central bank increases the money supply, supply of money, and therefore lowers interest rates, which therefore increases aggregate demand. The central bank would adopt this if there is a deflationary or a recessionary gap. As you can see here, the economy's actual output is less than its potential output. There's a deflationary gap. What the central bank would do is increase the money supply and lower interest rates. This would increase aggregate demand and shift it from AD to AD1 and hopefully close this recessionary or this deflationary gap. While this will increase employment and boost um, short-term economic growth, it will also raise the price level from PL to PL1. So this is in the case of a, a new classical um, model uh, where uh, an easy monetary policy closes a deflationary or a recessionary gap uh, which causes an increase. Actual output moves closer to potential output, but as a trade-off, the price level will rise from PL to PL1. Now, according to Keynesians, which have a different model for a different aggregate supply curve, if the central bank adopts an easy or an expansionary monetary policy, 
the effect on the price level will depend on how far actual output is from the economy's potential output. So you can see um, if, uh, if we assume the economy is at actual output zero, so the economy is at AD zero, adopting an expansionary monetary policy that lowers interest rates could move the economy to AD1, which closes this um, recessionary gap and moves it closer to the potential output. But you can see the price level only rises from PL0 to PL1. Okay, you can see it's a small rise in the average price level. Now, if the central bank continues to adopt an expansionary monetary policy to further close this um, recessionary gap, um, because AD1 is now closer to potential output, you can see there's a smaller gap, uh, a further increase in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2 will close this gap and bring the economy back to its potential output. But because there's much less spare capacity, the price level rises from PL1 to PL2. You can see the price level rises. So essentially, according to Keynesians, uh, an expansionary monetary policy will only raise the price level the closer you are to full employment level of output or potential output. If you have a lot of spare capacity and you're really far, there's a big um, recessionary gap, then an increase in aggregate demand due to adopting an easier expansionary monetary policy uh, might not raise the price level that much. But the closer you are to your potential, the closer you are to your full employment level of output, the higher the effect will be on the price level. So Keynesians and monetarists um, kind of, uh, uh, and neoclassicals, they disagree. Um, neoclassicals, uh, sh uh, they believe that any um, expansionary uh, demand side policy, whether it's monetary or fiscal, will always cause a rise in the average price level. Keynesians disagree. They believe that um, rises in the average price level only occur the closer the economy is to its potential output or essentially the less spare capacity there is in the economy. Now, what if there is an inflationary gap, which means um, the economy's actual output exceeds its potential output? Okay, what would happen is the central bank would pursue a tight, or in other words, a contractionary monetary policy, where the central bank will decrease the supply of money, which raises the interest rates and therefore lowers aggregate demand. And AD could shift from AD to AD1, which closes this inflationary gap and causes the price level to fall from PL, as you can see, from PL to PL1. Now, closing this inflationary gap will lower the average price level. However, there will be a slight rise in unemployment and a slowing down of economic growth. This is according to the neoclassical model. Let's see what it would look like according to the Keynesian model. Again, the Keynesians believe that the effect will depend on how close or how far you are from your potential. So say, for example, there is a, an inflationary gap and um, the central bank decides to pursue a tight or a contractionary monetary policy. Aggregate demand will shift from AD zero to AD one, which will cause the average price level to drop by a lot. However, if the central bank continues to pursue a contractionary monetary policy, the shift from AD1 to AD2, which will further lower the price level by only a small amount from PL1 to PL2, um, will, do, will not lower the price level that much, but will cause a huge um, uh, fall in unemployment and economic growth. So again, it's the same idea that uh, a tight or contractionary monetary policy will be effective in lowering the average price level uh, if the economy is, 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 is at full employment. But if there's a lot of spare capacity, continuing to pursue a tight or contractionary monetary policy will not affect the average price level that much, but will cause a huge uh, rise in unemployment and a slowing down of economic growth. It's very important to understand how the um, new classical model and the Keynesian um, model both differ on uh, how they explain the effect of uh, tight or easy monetary policy on the economy. Um, I hope this video clarifies the role of monetary policy, uh, especially when it comes to short-term uh, demand management. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.